Your Holiness, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. On stage, we have leaders of higher education institutions, several of whom you've already met. We enjoyed our ceremony with you yesterday in conjunction with Nova Southeastern, our wonderful partner across the street. Uh, we know that you've had a ceremony today also at Florida Atlantic University, also one of our partners, and we now welcome you to Broward College. Thank you for being here. This event originally was going to be just a conversation between those of us in leadership roles about higher education, but we thought what a wonderful opportunity to open up to our community, and so we have some faculty and teachers here and some students as well. Uh, I will ask you a couple of questions, Your Holiness, to start off, and then we'll uh, open it up as we move forward uh, and, in, and invite uh, our other panelists here on stage to join us as well. So, I'll start, if yes. it's okay. Yes. Your Holiness, in many of your books and public talks, you have emphasized that all members of the global community are profoundly interdependent, mm -hmm. economically, environmentally, and in many other ways. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's essential that we cultivate a sense of universal responsibility. In your view as educators, how should we in our higher education communities provide leadership in this responsibility to our global community? I think, of course, firstly, I'm not an educationist. Uh, I have no experience or knowledge about modern education. Uh, uh, your question, I think all, what's the day, uh, usually you call sentient being, the being who have cognitive sort of capacity, capacity uh, and uh, accordingly, this is the, some thinking power. Uh, so we are one of them. Then all, by nature, uh, they are, what's it, they, their purpose is to survive. Even non-sentient beings, like plant, these also have the right to survive. Uh, existence. Uh, so it's a certain uh, even chemical level, you see, they have some sort of capacity uh, how to survive. So then those uh, beings who have the cognitive power, also, you see, they, uh, I think I conscience here, they, these things, you see, they uh, help us you see, for survival. Uh, generally now, generally, you see, that uh, very limited. So images of danger, see or feel, then take protection. Uh, beyond that, not much concern, not much knowledge. But we human beings, now the another sort of words, the potential, capacity. capacity. You see, think much sort of, as the long term. long term or much larger area. Uh, here, education have the important role. We should make known to these factors. Uh, and then, how to deal these things. I think education, I feel, the main purpose of education is guide us the proper sort of life, or our goal, happy life. So now, today, uh, of course, I think the whole world uh, whether whether they can do or not, you see that different matter. But everybody realizes education is so important. Uh, however, I feel uh, whether I think it is something wrong, then please make correction. Uh, uh, you know, the 
I always have this sort of view, and also mention to pe uh, uh, share other people. In the European continent, and thousand years ago, about one thousand years ago, uh, you know, the separate education institution is started. So that means the church sort of was the uh, theology is not sufficient. So there are many more new subject. So it is necessary to create separate uh, education institution. Uh, so seems at that time, those subject, church can sort of uh, uh, manage. Uh, and those something new subject, and then for that, for separate education institutions started. Now those things which church can manage, now here, moral ethics. Uh, here, I think, the, very much the, I think the concept of God, creator, the, the whole world created by one source. So that actually is the concept of global responsibility. Whole globe is it come from one source, and we are part of that. So some kind of um, it acted as something that brought, at least in, in idea, together. Mm -hmm. uh, now then eventually, uh, the uh, church influence in the society uh, becoming limited. And I mean, the, frankly speaking, non-believers also now there. Although the, I think thousand years is non-believer there, huh? uh, but I think non-believer more active <laughs> like that. And then also, the, there are different variety of uh, religions. Uh, some uh, no sort of faith, no no sort of, no concept of creator. So there are now varieties. Uh, so in any way, uh, so today the a body or institution which taking care about moral ethics now becoming some way a little bit weak. So now the modern education uh, institution alone now should look after both fields, brain development as well as moral ethics side. So now here, in, in generally, you see the, we pay much more attention, right? adequate attention about education, but less attention about moral ethics. So since many years, since I think few decades in Europe and also America, uh, no, some occasion I express, now time come, we have to carry some research. Uh, in India also, uh, the Indian education system, modern education system is uh, British introduced, so more Western education system. Uh, so obviously, the, sometimes you see, that not includes India's thousand year old sort of traditions. Uh, traditions. Uh, so now more sort of research. And then the ethics in modern uh, education subject. Uh, now here you see the difficulty is they're not like other subject. You see, you can't, it's difficult to measure. Where? Measure. Uh, measure. Mm -hmm. And give examination about amount of compassion, difficult, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes. uh, uh, and then also is the one one problem here, uh, you know, Kasachuti. Mm. Some people, some my friend, you see, they believe moral ethics must be based on uh, religious faith. Then a uh, lot of complications particularly like India, there are so many religions, religious traditions there, so difficult. So obviously, I think basically two categories, the theistic religion, non-theistic religion. So both 
very much sort of uh, emphasis important for moral ethics, but approach is different. So, so then, the in institution, in school, school or education field, now we must find uh, some system aiming moral ethics, but without based on religious faith. Then can be universal. So that uh, usually I describe secular way, secular way of education about ethics. So therefore, education very very important. Indeed. But how to deal? I don't know. You know. You know better. You know better. Sometimes we're not sure we know either, Your Holiness. <laughs> <laughs> We understand uh, you're a um, fan of technology. In fact, uh, I just this morning, early, noticed that you are now on Twitter. Oh. Within the last two days, His Holiness has a Twitter account, and within only two days, I saw this morning as of about 6.30, there are 100,000, more than 100,000 people have subscribed to your Twitter account. I'm one of the newest ones. <laughs> Uh, technology is becoming more and more an important part of what we do in education. Uh, it can have its frustrations with some of our faculty who are here, I'm sure, would describe to you students who have their cell phones in class that ring sometimes and can be disruptive, but it also has incredible opportunity through the internet and the web to reach out anywhere in the world now. Uh, what are your views on the role of technology in our society? Oh, really wonderful. Really wonderful. <laughs> but I myself is completely ignorant how to handle <laughs> these things. The old type tape recorder, mechanical, mechanical <laughs> or, 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 or old type, and camera as well. These digit camera, I cannot handle. <laughs> no, digit summary. Digital. Oh? Digital technologies, oh? his holiness was saying the, it's beyond oh, him. The old type camera, yes, I myself also use use. Uh, you see it, and also sometimes a little damage I can repair. Uh, I think my skill, this uh, hand, finger, I think like my own age. <laughs> so this latest sort of what technology I cannot handle. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The uh, Quran Twitter. Uh, I think three, uh, three, four days ago, I met some my friend. So they suggested that. Uh, then, uh, looks is very, very useful. Uh, but of course, at that time also, I mentioned you can handle teaching matters. So His Holiness already warned the person who made the suggestion that you know this is a technology that is beyond me. I cannot handle well, this. <laughs> but of course, some my staff member, of course, they have some knowledge. So like that, because of all the technology, I think, really uh, makes our life easier. An immense benefit. And then meantime, technology is technology. Uh, whether it can be constructive or destructive, depends on the user. User's motivation, more compassionate, more sense of responsibility. Uh, as the long-sighted and holistic sort of approach, holistic view, then these things can be positive, just constructive. If the user, too much emotion, negative emotion, the sole aim is destroy someone. And then this technology also can be destructive. So ultimately, it depends on user, isn't it, like that. Yes. So therefore, the technology itself you see, uh, no feeling, no cognitive. So technology itself cannot make distinction, moral or uh, right or wrong. Right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So these things are living technology here, brain, sophisticated uh, computer here. You see, it is only its role moral or immoral or good or bad these things. Yes? 
I know, Your Holiness, that all of my friends and colleagues here on this stage believe strongly in the uh, importance of global education. Uh, we here at Broward College, as an example, have many of our faculty members who participate in partnerships that we have with other institutions in Singapore and Sri Lanka and many Latin American countries. We have approximately 65,000 students this year, and there will be within that student population this year students who were born in over 157 different nations. So global education, in a sense, comes naturally here. It uh, organically has happened. And I know all of our education partners here have similar stories. As you have traveled in other countries and visited other institutions, are there things that we should try to learn that uh, others are doing well in uh, other countries and other education institutions? <laughs> I don't know. Great idea. I think the modern, modern education system is more or less universal. Uh, so one I noticed, of course, the modern education uh, really brings, I think, openness to their mind. I noticed in South Africa uh, and also in Jordan, uh, some young, stu young student who speak English, uh, fluently, uh, and also is really uh, educated in according to the modern system. Modern system. Uh, whether in Africa, whether in uh, uh, Muslim country, or whether in India, everywhere. You see. I think the similar sort of thinking. So much easier to communicate. Then those native people who are still not sort of modern educated, then their own sort of tradition, tradition something, a little bit isolated. So then difficult. So that I notice. So modern education is so important, so important. And like this institution, there's so many uh, countries. I mean, students come from so many countries and study together, and uh, knowing each other is extremely useful. That's really, I think, a very, very effective sort of contribution for develop the global citizen, global community. Global community. It's wonderful. Thank you. Let me open up now to possibly some questions from some of our other stage guests. President Ferraro. Uh, Your Holiness, uh, let, me, uh, let me just follow up with President Armstrong's last question. Uh, this country has had a long history of students coming from around the world to be educated in the United States. Uh, that's an enormous cost to the student and or the family and or their government, one of those sources. Uh, what, what is your feeling about the responsibility of American universities when invited bringing education to a host country? <laughs> Yesterday, in uh, my uh, public talk, or I think yesterday morning, uh, I think you were there. No, uh, I mentioned uh, the, uh, some American values: uh, democracy, openness, transparent, uh, free information. I think these values. I think universal value. I think some problems uh, we are facing 
like in our own case, the dealing with Chinese, uh, not Chinese as a whole, but Chinese as a communist. See, they grown up with certain sort of, what should they, um, training, or ideologically training. So it seems to see their their mind not open enough. Fixed. No. Ah. Fixed. Ah, something fixed. And I think they carry certain sort of activities uh, on the basis of their own mental projection picture. So former Soviet Union also, you see, uh, carry that, carry that. And then there is some uh, in Arab countries. Also, you see, I think, uh, because the two centuries remain isolated. So little knowledge about outside world. Uh, compare that, I think India, because of British sort of ruler introduced English language. Uh, language and modern education. So Indian, I think, generally speaking, I think much, much better to deal with outside world. Uh, so as a result, now India, uh, perhaps I think I, uh, other sort of the factor also there, but one thing, India's democracy, uh, rule of law, uh, freedom of speech. So compare some of the neighboring state, India is much, much stable. Mm -hmm. Even some problems here and there, always come surface, that's all. Others country, close society, some, some unrest there, but all suppressed. So essentially, more serious. So, so therefore, the American, when you carry some uh, help or program in education in other country, I think American, the Kasajwati, values. values, the universal values, democracy, uh, openness, free speech, uh, and then independent judiciary, these things I think are very important. Uh, some country uh, were not happy <laughs> these things, but I think worthwhile uh, to educate people. This I feel. So yesterday, I express. You see, sometimes, in, in, in recent sort of months, or recently after economic crisis, world worldwide economic crisis happened. There's some people, uh, even you see, praising authoritarian system, uh, the capitalist system, uh, the free market. There's some people with a little uh, doubt, right? Uh, that's, I, I think, uh, I think not, because it is not, not correct. I think human society, uh, not only money, but other values. The ultimately, the money also is related with these fundamental rights or fundamental value. So American should feel proud of your traditional value, democracy, freedom, uh, freedom of faith, freedom of expression, and independent free media, and independent judiciary. I think these you should feel proud. Uh, so, so economy field, economy because of that aspect, uh, some difficulties, but that does not mean America failing. No, the other values there. Uh, some economy sort of because of that. Uh, so that progress, uh, progress cannot compete these basic human values. That I think. The women came prepared with your books over here. You, you speak about the art of happiness mm. and the pursuit of happiness and that that is just a basic human desire. 
But then you also talk about the need for inner restraint, which I would say to you we have not been exercising well given the world condition. So I just wanted to ask you... Yes. I wanted to ask you to talk more about that inner restraint, that goal of inner restraint. Oh. I think they or say they, usually I say self-discipline. Discipline not imposed by some higher authority. No. That kind of discipline is really because of that. Oppressive. Now here, I think most cases, the spiritual sort of discipline, and also in the society, discipline, actually discipline means some kind of protection of oneself. Now some people, you see, who have because of the high blood pressure, then then doctor, you see, suggested you should you should not you should avoid. Certain, certain sort of things, types of food, uh, types types of food. Of food. and then restrain. That's not, that's the, uh, that's the self-discipline. For your sake, for sake of your own interest, your tongue uh, may may want to say something, uh, but use here. Oh, this is not good for my health. <laughs> so then discipline. So that's self-discipline, not imposing. By some outside, from outside, from outside, like that. So that's self-discipline. So I think you ask him the one. Now, uh, so uh, if uh, now I think problem, uh, we usually. You see, uh, take sort of what's it? Take like anger, fear, uh, jealousy, suspicion. These things we take for granted. Part of normal mind. Uh, and then sometimes circumstances also causing more anger, more suspicion, more fear. And if you take for granted, uh, not because of that. The, that is so if you treat this occurrence of these negative and destructive emotions to be simply just natural thing. Uh, then, the, because of, you see, the circumstances, you see, these negative emotion, then more often, you see, come. Uh, eventually, you see, the person's basic sort of, because uh, of the nature, then becoming more, because of the agitated, no? uh, agitative. So therefore, uh, uh, part of our mind, compassion, love, forgiveness, these also part of our mind. So the negative uh, emotion, because of the circumstances, is it more often because of that? Uh, Arise. Arise. Then under such circumstances, we must pay more attention about other uh, aspect of our emotion, which is essentially counterbalance. So that's why I think those destructive emotions restrain, try to minimize. And these, as a counterforce, these positive emotions then deliberately should, uh, should uh, increase. Now, for example, the uh, air condition, air condition uh, yeah. controller, is when uh, more coal uh, come, then uh, the heat system should increase. Uh, and then become outside too hot, then inside also is too hot, then you should uh, increase 
the cold, 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 temperature. Uh, cold temperature. Similarly, although these uh, different emotions are part of our mind, but calculate uh, some of these emotions are very harmful not only disturb our peace of mind, but also very much harmful for our health, body health. A constant fear, constant anger, hatred. Actually, some scientist is mentioned to me these, uh, some emotions such as uh, hatred, uh, fear, actually eating our immune system. So like compassion, uh, these see, the emotion, very, very useful, maintain our immune system. Some cases even increasing. I think that's quite logical. I think our body, uh, you see, originally our body is come through, uh, come through sort of that, uh, grown up in the atmosphere of mother's care, mother's affection. And also family member, if everybody take affection, show affection, take care, the children grown very well. Sometimes uh, there's a danger to spoil. <laughs> but of course we can make correction nicely. <laughs> so, so you see these children, Bodily, much healthier, particularly the brain, much more because of that. Healthy. healthy. So those children who have grown up cold atmosphere or beating, abuse, then very difficult. Then these children and the rest of their life becoming some, some kind of person. You see, no feeling at all, other's pain, other suffering. Then these often can manipulate. Give some money and go to kill that person. They will do. Because no feeling of other's pain. Isn't it? Like that. So therefore, discipline, self-discipline. Uh, out of reasons, out of uh, the, now there are you see, contradictions, short, uh, uh, short term interest, short term desire, long term interest. So sometimes there are contradictions, conflict. Con conflict. So then we have to take uh, seriously the long term uh, consequences. For that reason, some short term even though you want, but self-discipline. So actually, protection of your own happiness. So no contradiction, so no contradiction, isn't it? I think put self-discipline. Discipline, just what word discipline. Then there are other discipline, you see, imposed by other force. That's really terrible. Thank you, Your Holiness. President, yes, sir. I've had the pleasure of being in your company now five times and hearing your words of wisdom. And I've had an opportunity also to read your books. Your profession of the core values of the United States are most appreciated by me. The life, liberty, freedom, democracy, the pursuit of happiness, those concepts came about during the Age of Enlightenment, and one man that was our third president, who's also a native Virginian, Thomas Jefferson, he professed the same thing. One statement he said for us educators, educators, uh, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was or never will be. Could you give us some advice 
of, as educators, wishing to have a nation that is not ignorant and free in a state of civilization. How do we convince those individuals that you mentioned that may wish to remain uneducated, who may wish to remain in more traditional aspects? How do we break that bond that they may voluntarily or involuntarily have? How do we break those chains of, of the lack of freedom that they have so that they would like to have the pursuit of education? I think there are, uh, as far as I know this, uh, there are two categories. Uh, one category uh, is some native people. I know this in uh, Latin America. Is there some, oh, one, one time I was in Colombia or something. Peru, or I don't know. One country, there are some uh, indigenous people oh, come to see me and they are very much concerned about the preservation of their own culture, their own identity. And for that reason, they prefer remain isolated. Oh. Then, uh, then a similar sort of to the indigenous people, like the uh, they call her such as the Maori. Uh, yes, Maori. in New, uh, New Zealand, you see the Maori people, and then also the Sami land people. Sometimes people call Lablander uh, in northern Scandi Scandinavian country. So now, for example, the. Uh, uh, the Sami land people in Norway, in northern Norway, they thoroughly educated through Norwegian language and thoroughly educated. But at the same time, you see, they carry preservation of their own identity, their own culture, their own language, also. The language also. Uh, so they, uh, I, uh, I have sort of strong sort of uh, view that the Sami land method. Uh, for preservation of their own identity, their own culture, through modern education. It's the right one. Uh, uh, in America also, there's some uh, small pockets of in, in, uh, native Indians. One occasion I met is some, some of their representatives, you see, they are very much concerned about preservation of their own language and their own identity. It is right. But then I ask, how many population? The one occasion, one say, their own tribe, about 2,000, 3,000, like that. Then very difficult to preserve. And then also, uh, often you say, I ask such indigenous people whether they have script or not. Then many cases, no script, just oral. So then I suggested to them, you must have a script, written script, written script then Romanized script. If, if traditionally no written script, then must invent some, invent some script. So, with uh, modern education and preserve their own culture, their own identity. Uh, then, within ancient culture, heritage, I think it is really worthwhile to make distinction. As far as Tibetan is concerned, uh, right from the beginning, you see, our main concern and effort is preservation of Tibetan culture. Uh, but within the culture, some form of culture, aspects, aspects some, some of the aspects of, aspects of culture, the social sort of creation, the social condition change. Uh, then these will change, have to change. No use to preserve. 
that one aspect of culture heritage is something very uh, useful. Uh, so that culture we can preserve because there is reasons. And if we explain properly, then people realize uh, it is something useful to preserve. So that kind of culture really worthwhile to preserve. And some cultural heritage actually, in the, in the, according to the reality, out of date. There is no use to preserve. So some, even religious also tradition, the, most of these because of the ancient religion, you see, come uh, at the time of you see, the uh, of the, I mean, uh, more than 1,000 years ago. So the religious uh, Buddhism also uses some concept. You see, they uh, develop according the existing social system. So that part. Now the social system change, the, the social sort of way of life change. Uh, then some sort of rules, which you see mentioned at that time, according the social sort of uh, system. Then these, I think, uh, should uh, change. Should change. Some occasion I express. Uh, uh, in, for example, in India, now India, I, con I usually consider my second home. Now, last 50 years, now 51 years, I live in India. Then my body survived with Indian rice and Indian dal, <laughs> and and my mind, <laughs> the Indian sort of was a ancient Indian thought. Buddhist, Buddhism uh, come from India. Uh, so I am, I, I can see, I usually consider, oh, this, uh, I mean, these uh, last year, you see, we carried 50th anniversary since we come, uh, India. come to India. So there's some occasion I, I described, I'm son of India, in the sense, as I mentioned earlier, this body survived by Indian food, and my mind is filled by Indian ancient thought. So. It's actually the sound of India, but some of the Chinese communist ear. You see, this uh, sounds very, very negative. <laughs> so they accuse me like that. So, so in any way, so in any way, in India, uh, uh, sometimes I express uh, some of their custom, which essentially outdated. Uh, Sometimes the human rights concept, uh, according to their thousand year old tradition, sometimes a little conflict. A conflict. Then we must accept the universal value. And some of the traditional uh, custom have to sacrifice. That's how I feel. And then another category, uh, deliberately, I think political reason. That mainly power is more, and sometimes deliberately, because of that, try to isolate. So like that. So, can you understand the precise question we have? His Holiness was wondering whether you could be more precise. Um, In the United States, there's no saying you, you can take a horse of water, but you can't make them drink. How do you convince those individuals who do not wish to be educated to be educated? How do you get someone to thirst for education in a world that seems sometimes not to promote education? <laughs> and I think most children 
uh, I think may not have keen interest about for study. In my own case, you see, when I was, you see, begin to study, no interest at all <laughs> for study, just for holiday or play. <laughs> so sometimes you see compulsory to study. So that I think same. Uh, but then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you see, they, like some of these indigenous people who are really concerned about preservation of their own identity and their own culture and method isolate. That's actually suicide. So, uh, I think education, whether the children's side, uh, willing or, because willingly or not, so education is very, very important. Without education, you can't be a productive human being or eventually you will not be a happy person. Ignorant or completely ignorant, very dull. And then okay, like animal, <laughs> just the feeding and shelter. The, and then sex, that's all, <laughs> nothing else. That may be satisfied. Or unfortunately, of course, this is a not political statement, <laughs> but, but you know, in, in, the, in the some communist countries, you see, they really put a lot of sort of censorship and distorted information. So that actually, you see, they want their own subject remain sorry, uh, ignorant, no other ideas. So what they told, they should believe that. So communism is the best. Capitalism is imperialist sort of system, very bad. Now they copying, very sort of rashly, copying American sort of values. <laughs> when I was in China, 1954, 55, they always say America is number one enemy, imperialist. And Russia is the number one friend. And eventually turned different way. <laughs> <laughs> so these are narrow-minded and they deliberately put people in ignorance. So I, uh, uh, I always stress the transparency. Democracy in China, democracy is concerned, sometimes I feel uh, because of that, all the certain democratization. I think too much chaotic, chaotic, chaotic situation may develop. That's nobody's interest. So gradual change, but the transparent and the freedom of press, that's very essential. Now they always say, people's government, people's republic, People's court, people's liberation army, people first. Then, meantime, fooling people. <laughs> Isn't it? This is really wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, people must inform what is going on. And one, over one billion Chinese people have the capacity to judge what is right or what is wrong. Must give them thorough, thorough information. They have every right to know the reality. There's no moral sort of background censorship. Why? And too much sort of distorted information. But this is not political statement. Please don't write. <laughs> some, 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 some media people, they, out of whole hours of that conversation, just to pick up one word or Dalai Lama still says such, such things. No, not good. We well, understand. <laughs> I, uh, I just to express what I feel like that. Thank you. Uh, Your Holiness. Uh, uh, you are a great teacher, and you speak to a very large audience, and amongst that audience are leaders of countries. And sometimes you're more successful than others uh, with some leaders. Much like in this room, there, you have a room full of teachers and educators who reach their students, some better than others. 
Yesterday you spoke about the, the uh, with, with positive influence on the response to Haiti of other countries. Yes. In order to respond like that, countries generally have to have success as a country and success with their personal image as a country, their, their national image as a country. Same way with teachers and students. Uh, you can reach some students easier than others, and largely the ones you can't reach, it's often much like Dr. Hanbury, either they don't want to learn, or their self-image, their, their self-worth might not be where it needs to be. As a teacher, how would you suggest that we reach people with a better understanding of their individual worth, and yesterday you spoke of your commitments, the commitments, the individual, what's inside the individual as part of the collective, as part of the nation, as part of the world, how do you get people to understand that their value as people really matters to what happens to everyone? Yes, one, when we think about the global crisis, then one individual, very tiny, insignificant. But the change, uh, on the other hand, if we think it properly or systematic way, systematic. systematic, then naturally, this is change on this planet, or is facing because of the, uh, what is it, a certain effort to overcome certain sort of problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, initiative or initiative or the job on our shoulder. Nobody's because of that shoulder. The problem which we humanity facing. Now we humanity ourselves must face this challenge and find ways and means to overcome this. So then when we talk humanity, there's no something humanity there beside ourselves. No. Six billion humanity from one, two, ten, hundred thousand, ten thousand like that. So billion, six billion must come through one. So you are that one. So change must come through one. Then ten, hundred, thousand, lakhs or hundred thousand, million like that. So initiative must come through individual. So judging that, uh, you have some sort of the potential to make some contribution for change of the world or make better world. So in any way, someone must come, must carry initiative. Everybody is waiting, come, come someone. It's a mistake. Ourselves, as our own moral responsibility. Do something. Whether achieve or not, that's a different question. It is our moral responsibility. And also is some some goal. Well, goal, right? Goal, something worthwhile to achieve. Make an attempt. No question whether that goal, whether materialize my lifetime or not. That's a different question. Uh, sometimes or something. Uh, if materialize within my lifetime, then worthwhile make an attempt. If too big, too long, then because of that you share. What's it? No. Uh, leave it. That's wrong. We have to, we have to start. Particularly this generation. Now, now here, you are not too old and too young, so you are the generation who got the I think deeper experience what happened in the 20th century. Now we are supposed showing a path to coming generation, which are experience what, what we collected from previous because of the century. Previous century, actually, I think there are many good, good, good things there. As you see, you mentioned using these technology, marvelous technology, these things you see invented in that 20th century. But in the 20th century, according to some historian, 
over 200 million human beings killed. And nuclear weapon actually used on Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So that century is really terrible. Century I usually call century of bloodshed. So nobody, nobody like that. Nobody want that. Repeat. So it is our responsibility, this generation's responsibility, to tell younger generation uh, if the previous sort of trend, just the power, power, uh, disregard moral ethics, the result, suffering. Immense suffering. So we have to tell our younger generation. Now think more the sort of also the uh, other side which more safeguard for peace, happy, tranquility, like that, isn't it? So it's our responsibility. Make an attempt, if fail, no regret. At the time of death, no regret, I done my best. Okay. And I think the next generation who eventually going to face some problem, they also say, oh, because uh, our, our elder uh, show us right away, but ourselves fail, now we can't blame on them. Okay, otherwise, uh, they may say, oh, our elder uh, not showing us the right part. Right. They may, now, nowadays, we Tibetan, at least myself, you say, I often blame our previous generations. They made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so I think all, I think maybe you know, the grandfather or grandmother, so your grandchildren, eventually, they may criticize their grand because of parent, or they, kasa, Neglected, yes, neglected. So in any way, human generation, I think at least the next few thousand, I think we have to remain like this, some complain. Uh, <laughs> but uh, within that, we have to make every effort be better world. Isn't it? And also I think the uh, we can't uh, sort of rely totally on God, or those people who believe God. So God created this, but at the same time, there are a lot of problems there. That we have to solve this problem. If we put all the responsibility to God and just pray, 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 uh, that's unrealistic. We have to work. <laughs> Your Holiness, you speak a lot about inner peace and all of the positive values. Uh, just for especially our students, how does one deal with hatred and terror and conflict that one may face individually, even though they want to exemplify the high values that you speak about? when there is someone perhaps pressing them to act in a way that's perhaps not of high value, uh, what do you suggest they do? Of course that's difficult. Uh, but I, for me, for my experience, is the holistic look. Now, uh, that makes differences. Uh, even the event, if you look more wider way, there could be some positive things also you can see. And then also you see they're facing a tragedy. Uh, also is from the wider perspective, they are not just you, there are many people. Uh, so when we just think oneself and not looking more holistic, 
or more wider way, then you see, mind really almost become like prison, right? Uh, and thinking just one, one sort of problem, uh, one, event. Uh, one event, and uh, actually self-centered sort of egoistic sort of uh, uh, perspective. Uh, perspective. Then you know, think just oneself. Then whole your attitude become smaller, narrow. Then small problem also appears something very un big, unbearable. Same tragedy, same problem. If you look from wider perspective, then uh, not much sort of serious. Uh, even you see the quite serious sort of problem for for yourself. But okay, that if you look from wider perspective. So, I think much. Uh, I think maybe, as uh, useful to look problem itself from from Kasuda, from various angles and then also you think humanity as a whole there are millions of people then come uh, billions of people who are facing the same problem but comparatively now for example in America comparatively much better fortunate there are democracy there are system judiciary of the system and, and everything is much better than some remote area. I think some of these African sort of state and some Asian state, they, uh, some remote area, no, because of the basic facilities. So remember this, then you feel oh, fortunate. So sometimes I use the, uh, I express American student go uh, different part of the world, then you will realize how fortunate your own, your own country, your own area. And then still, the gap, another sort of thing, I think global, because of that, a global sort of, uh, issue. one issue is the gap rich and poor. So global level also is this big gap, rich and poor. And uh, within the nation, so America, uh, some time back, I was told the number of the billionaire increasing, but poorer people still live in there. One time in Washington, uh, I expressed the most richest country's capital, but what called suburb, the suburbs. Suburbs is Washington. There are many poor people. So we have to address very, very seriously how to reduce this. Not by force, but by education and effort. The poorer section of people, give them education and give them city expertise and equipment and give them courage. Right. Uh, so in India also, one day, one uh, uh, the family family member, uh, so someone who's come from Bombay to see me, and uh, she one lady she told me she want to uh, some blessing, receive some blessing, receive some blessing. Then I told her, uh, I have nothing, uh, so called some blessing. Uh, I have no. Uh, I myself need blessing. <laughs> uh, then, uh, then you have the sort of potential to uh, uh, to get blessing. That's your wealth. So some portion, without damage of your sort of capital, you see, utilize uh, some money for education. I mean, education and health to some slums in Bombay city. Help them. That is the real sort of source of blessing. So that's the way you get blessing. So like that, those richer family, richer community, 
or white, because of that. Facility, education, health, the ex training, expertise, these things. Then mentally respect them. Oh. Show them your affection, your concern. Then mentally this gap reduce. Otherwise, poorer sex of people, sometimes jealousy, more frustration, frustration transform anger, anger transform violence. So this is one, one of the very, very, because of the serious issue, how to reduce. Like the communist, once they reduce, reduce to everybody become back, everybody become because of poor. <laughs> that also not, not correct. <laughs> and now you see some change. So billionaires in China, <laughs> socialist country, uh, but <laughs> huge gap, rich and poor. <laughs> That's unthinkable as a socialist country. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, yes, that is true. In spite of your uh, attitude, reasonable, but the other side uh, not do the same way. Uh, but then think, this is the second thing, Ray. Think more proper, more deeper way. If I retaliate, what result? Even things become worse. Then you practice tolerance. And in spite of their uh, negative attitude, if you keep positive attitude, then there is much chance their attitude will change. If you take similar sort of attitude, tough or arrogant, then their attitude becoming more harder. So that may remain years, years. There's a Tibetan, uh, among Tibetan, there's a, some it's a tradition, although, although they consider something heroic sort of tradition. The grandparents' time was something, uh, some uh, quarrel. Then there are generations, whole generations, you see, they keep you see, that and then take opportunity. Once they uh, have the opportunity, they uh, revenge. That's a foolish. <laughs> 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 so just uh, a few days ago, Dharmsala is a, some Tibetan from very remote area, Tibet, is a come to see me, and they told me, oh, in their remote area, still that practice is there. So uh, they asked me, please, you must mention name of their own place. Is that kind of practice is totally sort of wrong. <laughs> so like that, you see, uh, if you treat, in spite of their attitude, negative attitude, if you remain calm, then I think the other person, sensible, if sensible person, then eventually will change. That's much better. Of course, the physical sort of danger come, then you should run away. <laughs> oh. Isn't it? Uh, I often is telling people, if mad dog come, then you still say, patience, patience and the <laughs> compassion. That's foolish. <laughs> Must run away. Thank you, Your Holiness. We're coming very close to the end of our time. We only have a couple of minutes left. Many people off stage are telling me. President Law here, I will give the honor of one last question for a few brief comments before we bring the program to an end. Thank you very much. Your Holiness. Yes. No, yes. Uh, yesterday in your comments, you mentioned environmental concerns yes. several times. Would you take a few minutes just to talk to us about our responsibility in face of the environmental issues we face? Firstly, uh, according to my own experience, you see the re reaction to violence immediately come. Uh, but then, uh, for environment degeneration, degeneration, uh, degeneration, not that kind of so striking. Without notice, gradually degenerate. So once we noticeable, 
you see some uh, eye problem or breathing. breathing problem, then maybe too late. So therefore, educate about importance of environment is very, very essential. Make awareness uh, through Kazakhstan, through environment, through radio, or through Kazakhstan, newspaper, through media, and also through education like that. And then taking care about environment, not just a few slogans, but the taking care about the environment it should be part of your daily life. So that, uh, from my uh, thinking, from my experience, that usually whenever I left the hotel room, I always uh, switch, off. switch off the light. Uh, then water, I never take uh, bath. Bath, uh, Use bathtubs. Uh, bathtubs. Uh, in my own uh, house in Dharmsala, uh, previously, one bath step, later I removed that. Only shower. But shower, two times a day. <laughs> so, con some contradiction, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Your Holiness. And then, 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 then I, want, I want to share, you see, about the, what's the ecology in Asia. Of course, no relation with America directly. I think indirectly, maybe, Tibet as a roof of the world, and some change that, and it, uh, the plateau. a plateau, that also see affect India's monsoon, and also in monsoon in China. So that way, indirectly, may have some connection with this part of the world. Uh, but at least in Asia, some Chinese ecologist, some academic academician, uh, I saw, I think, uh, two years ago, uh, one Irish uh, ecologist, one scientist, uh, he showed me one article wrote by some Chinese academician. Uh, they described Tibetan plateau uh, as the third pole, third pole, because the affection to global warming as much as North Pole, South Pole, Tibet Plateau, also very, very uh, important factor. So he described Tibetan Plateau, third pole. So, uh, and they say, the global warming rate in global level 0 0.1 Tibetan plateau 0 0.3 they say so that's i think one perhaps one new information so we uh, indian now indians also you see they taking a uh, series of notice and now chinese academician also you see they uh, taking sort of series sort of uh, notice, but then government level, they only think about exploitation of major res major resources, minings like that. So just a few days, just before I think two or three days ago, I before I leaving America, I met one Tibetan. In his own village, this is some mining carried by Chinese officials, communist officials. Uh, there. I don't, they, they don't know, but some animals, domestic animals, as well as wild animals, many died. I think water polluted or something. So it happened like that. So now, hopefully, with these uh, scientists, including Chinese scientists, they are sort of giving warning, maybe eventually government may take a sort of serious, serious, or serious, notice. Uh, serious notice. A serious notice. But you know, in many, I think during Torumchin, uh, Prime Minister, you know, uh, the former Prime Minister, Torumchin, uh, when he was there, 
because at that time some because of unprecedented unprecedented flood which took place in China proper. So they found the uh, so the in Tibetan area a lot of last few decades a lot of deforestation. So they found some connection, that flood and the deforestation in upper area of Tibet, northeast, no, no, southeast Tibet, and border with Burma, I think greatest of the forest in Asia. Uh, so the government at that time used to put some restriction. But then corruption through pocket, the local officials and some Chinese businessmen, you see, they still carry these deforestations, like that, cutting, like that. So global issue is very, very, because of global, because of, uh, environment issue. Environment issue is very, very serious. Or sometimes, you see, there's some people, there are people have the impression, now science, scientific sort of, because of highly uh, developed and technology, so we can control nature. I think that's unrealistic. Ultimately, we still remain under nature. So we have to take seriously about nature pet. Nature's law. A nature's law, like that. We must realize we are part of the nature. So sometimes you see some people describe Mother Earth. Mother Earth, right? Earth Mother. Mother Earth. I think that word is very, very nice. Isn't it? Earth provide us oxygen and everything. So if something goes wrong, then I think that simple answer for all our trouble and all all humanity diminish, then no longer any any problem. <laughs> Whether God acceptable or not, the eventually world world will, will change, will go. <laughs> like that. A sun itself, after five billions of years, our sun also will will change, will disappear. Then we, no question. So these also sometimes is helpful. Look, eons, eons. Uh, then our life, just hundred hundred years. Uh, so when you take that kind of really vast vantage point, it put things in perspective. And then also, you know, the picture from space, take a world, blue planet, very beautiful. But in it, a lot of trouble. <laughs> but, but looks, no national boundary, isn't it? Just one planet. This picture also is helpful to bring idea. We are just one planet. Six billion human beings remain there, just one home, blue planet. Isn't it? Sometimes we American feel America. And we Asian, we feel Asia, <laughs> African, like that. From planet, nothing. Just one <laughs> small planet. Your Holiness, you have now been in 50 years in your second home of India. Mm -hmm. This college is celebrating its 50th anniversary this oh, year. Oh, oh, oh. So for even more reasons, we thank you for being with us. <laughs> thank you. We, we were very pleased to be able to award you the first bachelor's degree from this college yesterday, and we thank you for accepting that on behalf of our faculty and our board of trustees. Thank you. Thank you. And we thank you for your time with us today. Please join me in thanking His Holiness for being with us today.